This is The Art of Startup War, and I am your host, Brian McMahon. I am the sensei here at Expert Dojo, the fastest growing startup accelerator in Southern California. Now, in the first two seasons, we answered your questions about how to find investment for your business. We brought in the most accomplished investors in startup in America. You can find it on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Now, here in season three, we're flipping the script. We're going to hear real stories from entrepreneurs who are in the trenches today. In these episodes, we're going to take our guests through the storytelling model called the entrepreneur's journey. We'll hear about what sparked their call to entrepreneurship, help they received along the way, forces they overcame, dark times and revelations. So join us every Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and start the week a smarter entrepreneur. Morning, it's Brian. We're back again, another brilliant entrepreneur starting a phenomenal company, which is changing the world. Now today, I'm going to be speaking with Brandon, and we're going to be speaking specifically about ed tech, and more importantly, the future of ed tech, and the future of ed tech being positioning all of us to not only learn every single day, not only develop every single day, but also love developing every single day. Welcome. Thank you, Brian. It's so good to be here. How'd I do? Good. <laughs> it was a good intro? Yeah. Yeah, it says what we're going to do? Okay, I, I love it. So look, talk to me a little bit about why education became so important to you and why you've now dedicated every single thing you do every single day to making people in a better position to be able to have better lives. Yeah, I remember when I got into college, it was one of the most exciting days of my life. You know, I'm going to business school. It's what I've been dreaming about for four years. But at a certain point, I started thinking to myself, what am I really learning? I mean, of course, some of the stuff was cool, but there was so much emphasis on memorizing PowerPoint slides so I could write them on a piece of paper. And I started asking myself, when am I going to use this? And that's when someone recommended a book to me. It was a marketing book. And everything inside of that $5 book was the opposite and a lot more useful than what I was learning in my marketing class. And that's when I started thinking, okay, is there other stuff outside of this school education I'm getting? And that's when I started reading books. One book turned to two, two into four. And at a certain point, I actually went to the dean's office of uh, the business school. And my intention wasn't to say that, hey, this is bad and just complain. I really wanted to get a different perspective on this. So I said, look, I just f feel like I'm getting an outdated education. I'm learning more from these books than these classes. And I was hoping and waiting for her to tell me why I was wrong. And she just said, well, you know, what you're saying isn't a function of the school, it's a function of the education system. And that's what really drove me. And that's when I really had that big insight walking out of her office that I need to take my education into my own hands. So, so school is broken and has been broken for probably 20, 30 years, right? Nothing new has come into school. I think about it now. I'm watching my kid in school. I got a 12-year-old, you know, Liam Well, right? So yeah. Liam goes to school every single day. He does exactly the same math stuff that I did 30 years ago. Like, exact, there's no different. He does the same fractions, the same formula. He does exactly the same history. He does exactly the same English. He does exactly the same yada, 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 yada. Like, nothing has changed. But if you look at the challenges that Liam are fa is facing today versus the challenges that I faced 30 years ago, they're night and day. So yeah. is that what you found? Yeah, I think that's one part of it. And I think another part of it is all of the things that aren't taught in the curriculum. You know, you, you're facing anxiety. How do you deal with it? You, you, you know, most people don't know how to use their time. How do you speak in public? I, I mean, there's so many things that, that aren't taught. And even if they are taught, how do you know that you're getting the perspectives of the people that are the best in the world? You're usually not. You're getting a very mediocre answer in a lot of these schools. Yeah, so developing as a human being. So what you're doing is you're being taught things in school that they expect will be useful for potential tasks that you're going to do in the future. But you're not taught, like even though you're there, more time than you are doing anything else other than sleeping, by a multiple of three, right? You are not being taught how to develop as a human being. Like what emotions, I, I love that actually, because you're not. And actually it's the opposite of that, because if there's something that you're being taught that you disagree with, 
and you put your hand up and say, you know what, I think that might be wrong, what would happen? Well, I mean, there's... You a, get smacked down, right, right? there's one right answer. Yeah, you get smacked down. So, so you, as personal development, there's no chance to do it. And then you go through school. Maybe you start school thinking the world is great and there are five million answers for every single possible thing and you should discover them all. And then slowly by slowly by slowly, you're beaten down through school to just accept the fact that if you just agree with what you're being told, you won't get into trouble. You won't get beaten. Notes won't get sent to your parents. You won't get into trouble. And then you go out the other side almost in a negative personal development space. And it's so weird. I'll tell you why it's so weird. It was not until, like, we've known each other for a year or so now. It's not, it wasn't until you and I started speaking and I started to look at not only what you're training, but what you pointed out is missing in the schools that I started to think, yeah, and actually, you know, it wasn't any different when I was in school. It was Mm. exactly the same. Mm. I came out worse. Hmm. Drastic, but true. So what's the solution? Yeah, well, one thing I'd say about that, I mean, I, I do think there are pieces of it that, that do work, and there were things that I did get out of school. I mean, my high school and, and things like that. But I think another piece that's really missing is in a lot of the, you know, the the experts like Anders Ericsson or, or people that talk about how they, they study mastery and human expertise, and they say that what's really missing is this model of human education and adult learning which is really flawed, which is the belief that if you learn something one time and memorize it, that you'll then be able to use it in the future. When study after study has shown us that that's not the case. You know, you can't learn something, take a test on and expect that one month, one year, 10 years later, you'll then be able to use it in the real world or have it make any measurable difference in your life. 100%. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, you talk about adult education, but as you know, I have my my boy listening to your daily updates, which are personal development updates, which are five-minute updates, which summarize all of these phenomenal business development books, and you take out the really important parts of it. So, and I don't want to take any of the, the, the wind out of your sails, but, you know, whether it's got to do with planning or it's got to do with being honest or to do with transparency or to do with living a better life or approaching the day in a better place. Like, I literally play these things while my boy is beside me. And then I can use it as practical lessons against something that happened the other day. So, you know, yeah, let me give you two days ago. You did this great piece for five minutes, which was about the projector and the human mind, right? Which is that if I project that something is useful and it has meaning and that I should do it really well, then my chances of being exceptional at that and actually improving are going to be better. So two, three, four days ago, I brought my boy out. We played some tennis and I said to him, practice some serves, you lazy little sod. And I put him on the tennis court and I gave him 200 tennis balls and I said, now go practice. And then I sat in the car and I was just watching him. I was kind of doing my emails, but I was watching him too. And he walks over and he picks up a ball and he looks at it and he kind of juggles it. And then he walks back again and it took him 45 minutes to hit. And it wasn't even 200, maybe 45, 50 tennis balls. It took him 45 minutes, 50 minutes to hit him. Then I played the projector of the mind. And I said, okay, here's the deal. If you go out there and you realize you hate doing this and you realize it sucks and it's terrible, then guess what? Your result is going to be exactly the same and you're going to continue hating it. It's not going to make a difference. Yesterday, I took him out to play tennis. He went through four lots of tennis ball, of, of uh, bags of tennis balls serving and he said to me, I just decided I was going to be great. And he said, you know what happened? He said, I saw you walking over the other side of the court and I started aiming for you and I had more fun than I'd had in any of the other things that I was doing. Isn't it funny? Hmm. So we're not talking about adult education. We're talking about, for, in my book, how kids should have access to this at the very beginning because if kids don't know how to be, then how can they learn properly? Mm. Yeah, and, and I think I think what you said there, because you asked me earlier, what is the solution? And the solution is being able to learn in such a way that you can use it immediately, right? I mean, there's such an, em- especially in today's world, there's such an emphasis on collecting and collecting and collecting information. We're just building up this huge mountain of information that we've collected. We get this ego satisfaction for saying that, hey, I've read that book and, and this other book. But few people stop and ask, okay, I've read it. How has it made my life any different? And if they ask, they they'd most of the time find that it hasn't. You know, or you listen to a book summary. Great, you've listened to 10 
a hundred, a thousand book summaries, how is your life any better as a result of it? And I, I think, you know, what you said, I mean, going back to school, it's the same thing. And I think what you said is uh, the solution is is learning in such a way where you're the both the material and the way it's taught is given to you in such a way that you can use it immediately and get a tangible result. Yeah, I love it. And, and, and you enable people in that way. So you finished school, you finished college, you came out and you said, OK, I am going to create a book summary service that is tied into specific outcomes, which almost when I look at it, it's like headspace for personal development, whereby every single day you're receiving these five minutes, which are all based on different types of books, whereby my life is just getting better and stronger. And look, whether it's about the projector in the mind, whether it's about Pinocchio's nose, uh, which actually Pinocchio's nose is another great one. I, which, which book was that from? That was a book uh, called Lying by Sam Harris. Oh, it's great. It's, it's, I don't know if the book was great. I know the summary was great, <laughs> right? Because it's so true. It's like lying is so exhausting. And you gave these, these to-dos, these exercises at the end, which yeah. is you got to call someone that you told a little lie to, not a big lie to. Maybe you told that lie to them to make it bad, to make them feel better. Like you didn't tell them a lie because you're a jerk. You didn't tell them a lie because you like lying. You told them a lie because you wanted to make them not feel as bad as they would have known. And you said, I want you to call those people. I want you to tell them the truth. And I immediately thought of someone. And I'm like, fuck that. I can't do that right now. <laughs> I, need, I just need a little bit of time <laughs> because it's not easy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So so really, really valuable book summaries, which are broken down into very directional, personal exercises that actually help every single day you become more developed as a human being. So, and, and right now you're at this really interesting crossroads, right? Because you've built the platform, which is phenomenal. Um, I think in the future you'll end up having an app as well, but you've built this great web platform. You've got this phenomenal ability to be able to summarize books and take two, three, four hundred page books and then break them down into these short summaries which are then leveled out over a number of different exercises. Um, and I think in the future as well, you will end up expanding that out using other people as well. But for what you've built so far, where do you see it going? Where do you see it going next? Where can it go next? Let me actually ask the question better. Where do you think people have got the most amount of need? Hmm. Yeah, well, uh, what really stands out to me is is two things. One is uh, a few years ago, I got an email from someone on New Year's Eve, and uh, I'd never met him before, but he took one of my courses, and he told me that he uh, a few months earlier he was suicidal to the point that he was he had, he had to be rushed to the hospital, and uh, he said that within a matter of few few months he started doing small changes that literally changed his life around where he was working at his dream job on lots of some major studios. And, um, you know, that's when I really realized that learning in a way that is entertaining, actionable, simple, um, and really speaks to, to what you're facing in your life rather than, rather than, okay, like, this is what I think you should learn. That's, that's when I really, it really clicked for me. And, and um, where I see it going is really giving people that it doesn't have to be to that extreme, but I see the need where um, we're all frustrated with many things in our life, whether it's unachieved goals or feeling stuck where I've been wanting to go after this for many years and I haven't, or relationships that were once great and are no longer great and we put labels on it and we say, oh, it's because we fell out of love or because we just grew distant. When in reality, that doesn't happen. What happened in reality in that specific case, for example, is something happened and then there's some sort of anger or resistance or something else and then we put a label an easy cop out of of um you know we're not in love but my, my bigger point with all of this is the need is we all have these problems and we're not taught any of these solutions on how to fix them but the answer is that there are people out there that have already solved every single one of these problems that we can have yeah so for me it's about finding the right answers and presenting it to the people that need it most. I think that's key, that every problem that we have today has got a multitude of different solutions from different perspectives which can help us solve that problem in some ways, some slowly, some slightly more quickly. But because there's so many books, 
it's impossible to find where that knowledge is. Right. So you're almost like a curator in a library right. that takes tens and tens of thousands of books that are on every shelf in every corner of the library and then you look into the mind of Brian McMahon and say using artificial intelligence in your case based on your platform you look into Brian McMahon's mind and you say okay Brian I can see that based on all of these things here you've got deficiencies in these areas but you're also you love these other areas so why don't we combine this and we combine this and we're going to create this environment whereby you are going to improve on a daily basis like that's powerful hmm. because otherwise there's no way I'm going to get through like how many books do people read in an average year two three tops you give me the ability to have a book every single day which is huge. So it's interesting. Now, here's the way I see it. For a company to be successful, because everything we've talked about so far is about the concept of what you're building, right? Now, this podcast is an investor-focused podcast. So the principle is, how do we find a business concept? How do we take that business concept and turn it into a unique and addictive user experience? How do we then take that addictive user experience and how do we create an execution which is unparalleled? And I mean like a Waze type execution or a Birds type execution or an Uber execution. One that is just vicious and it's direct and you almost can't even keep up with the users. And then after that, how do we create a scaling of that execution which allows us then to bring that product everywhere? If we tick those boxes... We have ourselves a hundred million dollar plus company. Right. Just as importantly, the investors are convinced we have a hundred million dollar company, and because of that, we get the investment to make it happen. So, I'm going to start at the end first. Right, the end is the scaling. You have how many followers on Udemy? A hundred and about one hundred forty-five thousand. Okay, how did you get one hundred and forty-five thousand? I, I have seven. By the way, <laughs> I have seven. What? <laughs> I was very proud of my seven. Yeah. Really? That was cruel. Yeah. How did you get 145,000 followers on Udemy? Yeah, well, it, it started with the first, uh, it was actually the second course that I did, which was on how to read more books. And uh, just the way that I talked about learning in general, you know, some of the, similar to what I shared here about the, the problems with the traditional way of learning and, and how we need to approach it differently. So people really resonated with that. And then from there, um, you know, for, for whatever reason, people resonated with the teaching style of these courses. I hear all the time on, on Udemy, uh, people saying, you know, you're my favorite instructor on Udemy or you're different or, or, uh, so I, I, I you're I engaged and you're compelling and, and you've used the word twice now, you resonate with people. Mm -hmm. And when you resonate with people, I mean, you're, you're a, you're a very, uh, enthusiastic and uh, I want to say emotional because it sounds like lack of control. You have a huge amount of control uh, with when you do it, but you're very engaged when you're speaking. Even here on the podcast, you're leaning forward, you're directly in, you're in the podcast, like you're entirely in the moment. And that normally on its own is really good, but when you can resonate with people alongside with that, it's okay. Then here's my point with the mm. scaling, is that if you've managed to get 145,000 people onto a third-party platform, Udemy, whereby you're charging a large majority of those people nine ninety nine or whatever the price is for them to listen to your courses, you've already proven you can scale. Like, you've already proven that users like you. I mean, it's good to do a beta in what we're doing, but actually it's not vital to do a beta because they already use you. And even when you launched the new platform, with new users on it, you immediately picked up paid users on a recurring revenue basis straight away. And you picked up, what, 150, 180? 150, yeah. 150. And how many did you lose over three, four months? Uh, about four. Okay, so you lost nobody. Like, it's statistically, it's not relevant, the amount of people that you're losing, because people obviously like your work. If they didn't, they wouldn't have stuck with you for what you're doing. And I'm one of those people. Like, I'm, I, I pay. You and me work together. I pay. Why do I pay? Because I think it's phenomenal value, actually. I think it's cheap. I almost feel I almost feel like I'm conning you by getting it for such a low price. So scaling, you can do 140,000 people who are paying for it. You can do 100 people who come onto the new platform. Then once you have a strong Facebook and Google marketing account and you've got plenty of investment in there, there's no worries for me that you can scale. Let's do execution. Mm. 
mm. going second from backwards, right? Execution, you, you immediately, when you and I first sat down and you said, I have this phenomenal ability, I have the skill to be able to do this. However, I need to create a platform that will actually allow me to distribute the content from all of these phenomenal authors in an incredibly curated way with your own very specific style and in the future with artificial intelligence built into it to provide them a really customized experience. You didn't just talk about it for 12 months like a creative who does not want to interact with their audience. You immediately executed. And you executed and executed and executed until you found that it started working. And even when you built it up and you it stopped for a little bit, and even when you get disheartened, as everybody does, you still execute it. So the execution part, again, is a huge tick in the box. The one area that we have to build something beautiful on is the user experience, that mm. human-centric experience, which is so exquisite that people will come in and it's almost like before they even touch the button on the app, the app is already coming up with everything that they wanted. It's that incredible design-focused area. That's all we need. Mm. I believe you have the scaling. I, I believe you have the scale. I actually really, really believe you've hit on something which is important. I'm not a big self-development guy. I'm not. Like, you know what I said. When we first started speaking, I'm like, oh, man, don't talk to me about Tony Robbins and all that kind of stuff. Like, I love how he helps some poor people and he does some good things. But I struggle with baseless claims to be able to change the world without giving people the skills. And you said to me, yeah, Brian, but there are tens of thousands of other people who approach this from a very different way. And some people do really like Tony Robbins and they do really need Tony Robbins. And other people need other specific types of books and other specific types of authors. So imagine if we had them all in one place. And in that second, I was sold. So that's all we have to do. And I've been thinking about this. I've been thinking about what's needed within, within what you have to create a $100 million plus company for investors to be coming in through the wazoo. I think all we need is a great, great, great design person to help build a phenomenal user experience and direct a tech team to be able to create. And it's not going to be Blinkist. I think it's going to be better than that because it's going to be somewhere between Headspace where you're directing to people what they need to change their lives and then also having an ability for people to go in and curate it themselves. Hmm. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. And, and, and uh, for me, I'm not looking at, at any of those apps specifically in the sense of, oh, I want to create the same as this or create the same thing as that. I, I think that I'm looking at it from the perspective of just talking to people that have real needs and real problems uh, very regularly as if that's as important or even more important than the actual taking the content, reading the books, and um, creating what I am creating directly for what it is that, that they want and what they need to live better lives and make a bigger impact. But the secret is still going to be the design, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because the, the artificial intelligence that's built into it that replaces you by you looking at every single possible outcome that there could ever be is the secret that's actually going to make me as the user feel that I'm getting my answers personally from you without necessarily being the case. Okay, so I want to look, I want to go, I, I want to do, I want to do you, okay? I want to look five years in the future and then you're speaking backwards and you look at what you've achieved over that time and I want you to tell me exactly what it looks like from this day to that. And you're talking about your current company and what you've achieved and what you've built and what it does and the amount of people it's impacted and how. Yeah. For me, I, I, the, the most important thing for me is building a community around a central message. So whenever I think about it, I don't think about, okay, I just want to deliver videos or audio or material to people uh, or even just to help them live better lives, but to build a community that are bonded by a commitment to not being bound by the the expectations of family, of school, of society. So when I think about it, I think about people all over the world 
that are being impacted and, and are have that bond. Um, whether it's you know they're connected through the app, through events, maybe through physical uh, locations and meetups. Uh, so so when I think about it, that's that's what I think about. And and quantify it a little bit for yeah. more for me, right? Yeah. So we're looking back. It's five years in the future. And you're looking back at what you've built. You're looking back at how many users are actually using your app. You're looking at how they're using your app, how they're interacting with your app, and how you've impacted their lives. Yeah, I mean, and the truth is, I don't know the the number of of how many users, uh, in in a in a five year period. And the the reason I say that is because I'm looking more at milestoning it out. And so starting from the beginning and working your way out. Right. So let's look at that then, right? So yeah. right now, we, we know we have the execution. We know we have the scale. We know that we have the basic website. And we know that we have people paying for that, right? right. Next step has to be building the app. Right. And building a phenomenal brand with that design around the right. app. That's going to cost us probably around $200,000, okay? So we're looking for a raise of $300,000 by July, August this year. Uh, well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, it's, I, we definitely do at some point need a raise. So whether it's a raise by July, August, or just self-funding that portion of it and continuing to grow, uh, uh I mean, it, it's, it's one of the two. Okay, good. But it's a possibility because right. remember, there's a lot of investors who are also going to listen to the podcast here as well. Right, right, and right. And those people are saying to themselves, okay, I get the idea. Like yep. it's an entire self-development program whereby you curate the program and it's every single book in the entire world on one place where people can get access to it. I can buy into that. And I can buy into the guy who's doing it because he's already done it and he's already got people going for it. So he's proven it at least in the beta level. And that's being really unfair, right? right? So when you get to this place of July, August, somebody walks up to you, gives you a check of 300,000, you take it? Maybe. Maybe. Okay, good. Yeah. That's good. By the way, that's the right answer yeah. because you want to make sure that you're the one in control. And that means you're the one in control of the people giving you the checks and the investors. I actually adore that answer, right? So August, oh, July, August, you have put $200,000 in wherever it's come from. You've built the, You've started building the app. The app is going to take three, three and a half months to get built. You've got a phenomenal tech person who's now on your team, who's directing the entire grow of the company and where it's going to go. Probably going to be September, October before the app is finished. But because we knew it was going to be finished in September, October, we're going to do either another small raise or we're going to invest some money in because we want to do some Facebook ads. So maybe a couple of hundred thousand dollars towards the end of the year. Now, here's the plan for next year. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you, but I'm also speaking to the investors here and I'm also speaking to other entrepreneurs who are listening. Come March, April of 2020, at the latest, we are going for a big seed round. And that means one to $1.5 million. And the beautiful thing about a round like this is we've already built it. Right. We already know our audience. We've already proven it out. Like we've done that with small change, with small money. Now we're going for global overthrow. We want to make sure everybody in the world has got access to the greatest book summary service that has ever existed within the personal development space and that they're receiving it every single day. And kind of to to my point before, you're raising you know, a million bucks, your cost per acquisition of a customer right now is how much? Well, right now it's mostly free. It's mostly because you're you're getting everybody by SEO and by webinars and everything else. Well, either that or from the, the you know, 145,000 people from, uh, that's just one platform, but then I have, you know, a few tens of thousands in other platforms as well. So just leveraging that and really um, listening to the user is, is what it's been about right now. Yeah, so but it will move to pay. Oh, 100%. As soon as, yeah, as, soon yeah, as we get to that place. But, it's, but again, it's beautiful that you're starting it in a place of actually uh, building an audience, building a community, building people who are actually around you. But even if we're saying it's going to be costing like 10 bucks a user or 15 bucks a user, because most of your money is going to be going into the advertising, that gives you 100,000 users straight away. What's so beautiful about that? Well, the 100,000 users at three or four bucks a pop 
is going to be $400,000 a month, which is going to be coming in straight away. And now it just becomes a game of users versus retention versus how much it actually costs to get new users on board. Now you build. And then that's the plan. And then we look at like the 100,000, 120,000 users you have and say, right, what are the options that we have to build that up to a million users? And can we build it up to a million users within three years? I feel with the kind of plan that, you know, we're looking at here, you can. I see no reason because we've already seen the scaling and we've seen the execution. How how much of alignment with what I'm saying? I'm, I'm only just throwing it out there, so I yeah. could be way off. But how how right am I, or, or where do you see it differently or the same? Yeah, uh, I see it. I see it mostly the same. Yeah, I I think, uh, yeah, I see it as. Uh, I mean, I I don't know about the exact dates or timelines where it's going to be. You know, March of 2020 or. Uh, February of 2020 or July of 2020 or, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. but, but, uh, I, I do see it as, as, yeah, I mean, I, I think, and there's already a lot of things that have been proven, uh, and have been shown and, and, uh, a lot of great feedback that has been given and people saying this is, you know, giving me a different experience than, than what I've gotten anywhere else. Um, so, so I do, I do, f- I, I do agree with, with a lot of what you just said. Yeah, the one area, funny enough, and and after this, I wanna I wanna let you finish up with some thoughts on entrepreneurship, some thoughts on how like you really want to impact on the world, um, and then finish up with your contact details so everybody can get you. Um, but I I I think this will be really helpful for everybody. Uh, I do feel almost by luck watching my little fella. Uh, listen to it and really get what he's got from it. Yeah. I think this will be such a huge service to the kids in the world. And I don't know if this becomes a kid's app. I really don't. But I think there's something there that every single parent wants their kid to be able to get. How to find happiness. How to continue with hope, not have it beaten out of you. How to keep focused. How to make sure that you actually do the hard things, not just the easy things. How to be transparent and honest and decent. How to be ethical, how to be moral. Like all of those development skills that we really want to give to kids so they learn to make the hard choices. Because if they don't get them, there's kind of a part of me, a very cynical part of me, that feels that once you get to your age or my age, man, it's not too late. Like we can still learn stuff. But most of the great part of us have already been beaten out of us. Right. That's it. Over to you, brother. What do you think about that? And then just your thoughts on on how you want to impact the world with the platform. And then obviously finish up with your contact details so everybody can contact yeah. you. Well, just to that point specifically, I mean, the brain is most plastic between the ages, they say, uh, of zero to seven. And then again, at a certain point during puberty. Right. So that's when you have the most. I'm so screwed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it it, it is uh, right. A lot of people are very excited that we've discovered that it can change throughout life. But those are the big windows of opportunity. That's when uh, you know it's called myelin is most uh, readily created. So uh, it, there there are definitely is something to that point of of and, and and some of the biggest changes that I have seen has been in people that have been younger. It doesn't mean that that needs to be discouraging for older people, uh, but but I do agree with you on that. And I, I just a cool story on that was uh, when I saw Liam, uh, he's 12, right? Yeah. Yeah, so when I saw him about a month ago or a few weeks ago, uh, it was so cool for me because I didn't even realize this, and he came up to me, and he was so excited to see me. He said, I, saw, I watch your videos every day, and I was like, what do you mean? And he said, uh, I watch with my dad every day, and I, I still didn't believe it. I'm like, uh, what what do you think of it? He's like, I love it. And I still didn't believe it. So I said, <laughs> which one did you like the <laughs> yeah. most? I said, which one did you like the most? <laughs> and then he started naming the names of the videos. Yeah. And I still, I was still a little skeptical. And then what really blew me away was uh, there's somebody, I was talking to somebody before, but I never told them what I did. So he said, oh, what, do you, what are you talking about? What does he do? And Liam started explaining uh, one of the videos that was about a book called Measure What Matters, which is about how Companies like Google, bon, uh, Google, Bono, the Gates Foundation, uh, they set what's called OKRs, like how they set their goals. And here's a 12-year-old kid explaining the concept of OKRs. To an old yeah. guy. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, uh, 
Yeah. I, 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 how powerful is that, yeah. right? Because when we hear kids talking about that, and you also explain it in a very child-friendly way. Right, I do. So you don't use big words. You don't make it sound really complicated. You don't try and... Um, uh, push yourself. A lot of people, when they're explaining things, they want to do it in a way that makes them sound extremely smart, right? right. You don't do that. If, if anything, you turn it the absolute opposite direction. You try and dumb down the book as much as you can so people can take, and then you reinforce it, and then you repeat it, and then you give very, very, very simple takeaways. So I think in that particular story, he was talking about you go through a forest and you've got the shed that you got to go past, exactly. and the, the lake, and you yeah. got all those types of things as well. But it's so simple, right? right. That it's that a, a seven to a 12 year old could do it so talk to me actually hang on before you give your details what are your favourite books how many have you read yeah I've read over a thousand in, in flipping heck a thousand <laughs> books it's funny because people always ask me what what are your favourites and I don't know uh, and, and I think I don't know because different books have impacted me at different times in my life uh, and I think another reason I don't know is I'm aware that there is a bias uh, probably not just in my mind, but in every mind, to favor books that you've read most recently. Uh, I know there's some authors you like. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, you know I love Principles by Ray Dalio. <laughs> I know yeah. you like Ray Dalio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good guy. He deserves it. Why do, why do you like him? What is it he does that, that, that stands out? Yeah. Well, I, I think this idea of rational thinking and, and I, I tied something, you know, what he talked about to other authors like Robert Greene in, in uh, The Laws of Human Nature, where he also talked about how rationality is a myth. You know, we, we look at the world and we were trained to go through this world with this, with this belief that we are by default rational. So somebody cuts you off in traffic or whatever it is, or your, your spouse gets angry at you. We, we, again, we put a label. We say, oh, this person is this type of person. And we think like, oh, they did it rationally, because, you know, when it's just a total myth. So I love how he approaches uh, that concept of we need to have a terrifying fear of being wrong and to be radically open-minded about that. Um so it's been so impactful for me and it's been so impactful. I did, uh, you know, several videos about it. And, and even even with my friends, I talk about Ray Dolly all the time. So, that, that, I, yeah, that is I would say that is one of my favorite principles. And there's some great authors out there. And these are Absolutely. people that, that people would never, ever, ever get access to. Right. So listen, mate, I'm with you all the way. I love what you're building. I truly believe people will look back on this in the future. I hope for kids, but for anyone, everybody will benefit from this and say this is being one of the most impactful five, seven minute sessions that people will receive every single day and people won't even want to start their day without it. And I want to be a part of it all the way with you. Um, can you share, please, contact details uh, so people can get you and how can people get onto Insider School? Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, you can email me directly. It's brandon at insiderschool.com. And uh, yeah, just... Insi- B-R-A-N, right? B-R-A-N-D-O-N, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, the website is insiderschool.com. Um, that's basically uh, everything. And, and by the way, the just a quick note about the name. You know, for a long time, I was wondering, I'm like, what, what am I going to call this? Uh, and not necessarily that that's what the name is going to be forever, but, but uh, the, the insiderschool.com right now was, when I started reading all these books, I realized that anybody who's achieved anything be, beyond mediocrity knew things that we were never taught in school, right? They were insiders. So that's, uh, that's kind of like what I look for is kind of those things um but yeah, yeah and also you're making school good again like school we think of school as something that we were forced to go to to learn things that we didn't think that we needed to know to prepare us for a life that we didn't understand well the beautiful thing about what you're teaching is that the moment that you hear about transparency with other people and being honest is like okay duh, it makes sense or when you hear about creating milestones to actually make sure that you achieve stuff okay it makes sense right. you know all these things they become part of like going forward in the future. Mate, it's been a pleasure. It's been Thank great, you. great, Brian. Thank you so much. Let's keep it going. Absolutely. And that's a wrap. Thanks for joining us. If you love the podcast, please empower your circle by sharing these stories. The Art of Startup War is brought to you by Expert Dojo. And remember, we invest in startups, $50,000 checks. Make sure you apply on our site if you are one of those great entrepreneurs looking to bring your company to the next level. As far as the Art of Startup War is concerned, we are back every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. So remember, 
check out the new episodes. If you want to find out what the investors think, check out season one or two. But make sure you join us every single week.